Hey guys, welcome back to the Zonix channel. We are building our E100 Gundam Mark III Unit 8. Yes, I bought the XGUZ Gundam Mark III. I didn't even know where I put it in that huge backlog mountain. By the time you're watching this video, this Mark III is probably one of my archive videos. So let's bring it to the sunlight today. Our E100, does this name ring any bells? I think some of the newer Gampla fans, especially if you only follow 1 to 144 scale Gampla and nothing else, you might start to forget about this name because no one brings it back up anymore. This line used to be one of the excitements for me because our U100 brought some of the designs into the 1 to 100 line. Yes, they are not as good as MG and you can say that the quality is basically an enlarged high grade. However, I love it because this line gave you some of the not popular designs. I like those and bought them in my backlog mountain. The last time a regular release was announced in the RE100 line is 2019. Since then, everything about RE100 is P Bandai. I got this P Bandai Mark III quite cheap if my memory isn't wrong. I highly recommend people don't buy this if you can paint it yourself. The original Mark III is light gray color. It's quite easy to custom it to unit 8 color. This P Bandai is simple color swap. As you can see, the menus are regular release plus an additional PB menu. Most of the color variant PB is like that, nothing surprising. Unit 8 is the same like the regular release. The differences are colors and the decal is water slide. Personally, if you ask me, I think the original color looks better. Red just seems like doesn't fit on the design. I'm still hoping that there might be a very small chance Bandai will do full armor mark free because why not? I love full armor. Now the build seems quite simple and there's not many things to talk about. So I'll see you in the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the RE100 Gundam Mark III Unit 8 review. Here is what you get. When I found the Gunpla, by now it's September 2023. I went back and checked the archive footages. I built this exactly 17 months ago. Well, isn't that great? I don't remember any building process and problems. So I guess maybe this Mark III doesn't have anything particularly annoys me. I do find my past self to be somewhat motivated and not lazy. It's kind of surprising to see I already completed the waterside decals my past self was amazing. I need to stop slacking, start working hard again and not letting my backlog getting bigger. For me, the finishing only left me one impression, a very typical RE100. Maybe I should cut the intro. Let me start the review. Sit tight. RE100 is basically a large XG if you want me to summarize it inaccurately. The stickers are not bad. It's on the good and smooth servers. You got the eyes and vents on the head are stickers, two spots on the shoulders that I'm not sure why it needed stickers, the yellow parts on the shield and on the binders. Overall, the stickers are in the places where it doesn't fall off or flip out easily. If you ask me what I see in the first moment, I can tell you if I'm not familiar with Gundam, I will probably just say this is Seta. The head is very close to Seta's design. I like the scale that RE100 chose in the end. This is balanced well. In the line art, the original Mark III looks evil and the face is ridiculously sharp. Then you look at the Unit 8 line art 
And you might be thinking, why does it look so round? RD100 took the right step. They made the corners and shape in a clear way, so it doesn't look either weird or funny. The neck is a simple piece with ball joint ends. The head is a bit big, which it felt tough to move. Up and down is okay, just a bit hard to move properly. The head can tilt, which is not a bad thing. Rotation is 360, but the armor does bump into the collar frequently. The chest is one of the parts that look close to the Mark II. It might look very big, but the weight is quite light. RD100 is a bit boring. It doesn't have a cockpit door for you to open, so we are going to articulations straight away. It has a joint in the chest, so the movements like front and back, side to side, or a full 360 rotation is available. The backpack is rich. You see a lot of things in the frame. Mark II might not suit some people's taste, but I think Mark III did a good balance. The middle of the backpack is three back thrusters. If you expect any of it can move a little bit, then you're wrong. On the top side of the backpack, a pair of beam cannons are available. The base connection is a ball joint, so the cannons can rotate to the front for a shooting pose. Not entirely facing the front, as the head and antenna is big, so the best it can do is like this. The bottom side of the backpack is the binders. Obviously, this design is inspired by the Hyakushiki. One note to yourself, most of the lines on the binders are shallow, so you might want to scribe the line or just draw it yourself. Both top and bottom part of the binders can fold back. This kind of reminds me of Shinanju. I know it's irrelevant, just the look of it reminds me of Shinanju. The shoulders are mixture designs from Mark II and Hyakushiki. There are two parts you can move on the shoulders. The first one is the small gray piece hanging at the bottom edge of the shoulder. The second movable part is the whole shoulder. For the whole arm's articulation, it will be slightly inconvenient because of the binders. The arms can do a simple 360 rotation, but it required the arms to move a bit forward. Another problem will occur. The pick joint doesn't have enough friction to handle the rotation. So sometimes when you rotate the arm, it will fall out. Lifting is a pass thanks to the extra joint in the shoulder. Front and back is available by quite a lot. Rotation is coming from above the elbow joint. Bending is not touching the shoulders, but that's enough. Hand options are standard, one pair of open hands and weapon hands. Mark III is a prototype, so the armaments are simple, starting from the beam rival. Mark III's rival is using a dual supply system, so you'll see two types of E-Pack. The front one is from Mark II's beam rival, the back is from Hyakushiki's beam rival. Both E-Pack can be removed if you want to. Shield is a big piece, a pretty normal looking shield, judging from the appearance. You will see two beam sabers. You can take them out and it comes with beam effects for display. Flip the shield to the back. You will see the connection mount and two sets of spare E-Packs. To put the shield onto the Mark III, find the spot on the forearm and just push it in. Simple as that. I'd rather say the waist is more like Hyakushiki. I mean, come on man, the long front skirts did give away the answer. Front skirts are separated. Each of them can move more than 90 degrees. Side skirts have a little bit of movement too. Back skirt is a whole piece with a joint, but the binders are too big, so the articulation is not really available. I don't know, is it just me or someone else has the same thinking? Every time I looked at the RD100 Mark III, the legs felt so long. Moving on, the legs are connected to a sway joint. The joint is connected separately, so it won't affect both legs. I'll let it slip this time. Front kick is absolutely amazing, thanks to the sway joint and front skirt got out of the way. Side kick is limited due to the side skirt will bump onto the armor parts. Back kick is basically not there as the back skirt is blocked by the binders. Knee band is excellent, a perfect U shape. The designs around the lower leg are layered. There's an armor part on the top of the foot. It can move on its own. The back of the legs got a piece to move. You see a thruster hidden inside the armor. Both sides of the leg got a gray piece. They can move away to give some space for the foot to move. The foot can move front and back, side to side, and no rotation at all. The no rotation design actually helps the Mark III to stand well. I truly hope RE100 can come back to life again, but the reality is full mechanics already replaced RE100's job. I still have like the fantasy that RE100 will be alive again, considering some P-Band I did roll out. Remember this photo? Until today, we only got Jim's number two and Jack in MG. Mate, this is just pure sadness. Rebounds, 
Green Pepper and Gaia needs a 1 to 100. I'm sorry, it's just every time I think of this photo, it just feels like your hope and expectation just went to wasteland. I drifted away from the review. Let me come back and finish the video. As far as I know, there are three colorways for Mark III. If you need any of it, I strongly suggest you just do it yourself. Spending more on this Mark III is unnecessary unless you found someone selling it cheap. Otherwise, just buy a normal RE100 Mark III. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell next to it. Join my Discord and see you next time. Goodbye.